Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Crossing Paths Television Ministry from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. My name is Don Reed Sr., founder of Crossing Paths Television Ministry. And we always have a special guest on here today for whoever we, the Lord sends us to us today. So maybe, uh, I don't know this man, I think he's been on television before, but he's going to share how Christ come into his life. Yes, so I want to surprise you, I don't tell you, want to tell you who he is, but Welcome today. Oh, Amen. Yeah, Ron Kosar. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you, Ron. God bless you, Don. Well, yeah. thanks for having me on the show today. Yes, uh, and it's, uh, it's it's amazing how we cross paths. And uh, but you know, Ron, uh, you've been on a co-host here now for years, and uh, and we've really had a lot of good time together. You and your wife Deborah. I want to make sure. Absolutely. Say hello to her. Right. Got to give Deborah a plug. <laughs> and. Uh, Everybody thinks, well, you know, maybe you come from a different life and you're a former pro football player with yes, New England. I mean, the Steelers. No, I mean New England, okay? Yeah. And uh, Detroit, right? Yes, and, sir. And uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you and let people know that you had through some problems in your life, right? Amen. And how you become a Christian, when you become a Christian, just like we do. You could be the next person on Crossing, like I said before, you may be the next one on Crossing Pass 2V. And my, bed, my brother Joe um, Marzette came yeah. up to me at an auction one time and said, that was him. I put him right his finger to him. So, um, Ron, tell them people out, you, uh, you as an ex-pro, uh, former pro football player, yeah. how it all come about your life. Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a long journey to get in on one show, but from, from ending up as an NFL football player, I'd like to start off by saying and telling people, life is a journey, you know? And, and my battle, my struggle actually started off at birth. I was a premature child. I was born in about seven months. I was two and a half months premature. So when I was born, I was just a tad over two pounds. So my life started out as being a struggle. I mean, I had bad legs, bad knees, bad ankles, and I had to wear braces on my legs, braces on my feet, even to be able to walk. And as I was younger, kids would make fun of me, you know, because of the deformities I had. But um, it's just amazing to see God's faithfulness in my life. <clears throat> you know, I was raised up in the country, and I was fortunate enough to be blessed with very good athletic abilities. So I was a, a state arm wrestling champion when I was 15 years old. wasn't even 16 wow. yet. And uh, they took me out to the places where they raced the horses out there and won a state championship in arm wrestling. I was a runner-up Golden Glove boxing champion in the state of Pennsylvania for two years. Wow. I did that when I was only 16 years of age. But I started focusing on football when I was in high school. I went to high school at Greensburg Central Catholic. So there's a plug for all my teammates that, that played at Central Catholic with me. And uh, I started there for four years, had a, a very successful career at Greensburg Central Catholic, was fortunate enough to be recruited by the majority of one schools across the country, Pitt, Penn State, Florida, Florida State, Texas. But I ended up going to college at North Carolina State. Now, right now, were you going to, since you were talking about salvation too, and everything, yep. were you, did your dad take you to church? Did you have a good background? Or real quickly, what happened? There? Well, I saw the transformation in my father's life. He was, a, he was a tough old truck driver. Before that? Yep. He was a professional boxer. So that's where I got the boxing background through the golden gloves and everything. My family was, was all into boxing. So I was raised that way, just a tough kid. But I saw the transformation in my dad's life. Wow. He was driving a truck at, in Dundalk Marine Terminal, and this big old biker guy was walking by him this way, and my dad's walking down the dock this way, and my dad said, how you doing? And the guy said, good since I asked Jesus into my life. And my dad turned around, and there was nobody on the dock. It was just him. Wow. And he said that would ne it never left his mind. Then about three days later, he was driving home in his truck and a big semi in front of him, the back doors open and a box fell out on the road right in front of my dad's truck. So he swerved off the road and went over to clean the road off and the box was full of Bibles. <laughs> yeah, so my dad said, I don't know what to do with all these Bibles, so I brought them home. So we'd sit in the living room and would watch Evangel College on Friday nights on television, Denny Duran, when I was, you know, I was in high school. And uh, we'd read our Bibles, and I watched God transform my dad's life. I mean, he was tough as nails. And that's, he just asked me one day. It was a real simple question. He said, have you ever asked Jesus into your heart? 
I was in seventh grade, going into seventh grade, and I knew I never accepted Jesus. So that's why in, in our audience, people say, oh, kids are this and kids are that. I was only in sixth grade, yeah. but I knew I never accepted Jesus. And uh, when I did, my life was transformed. Mm. I kneeled down in my basement of my house and committed my heart to Jesus. So did he encourage you to go into sports activities? Absolutely. Had? Sports were big in my family. Well, how did you choose the professional football? Well, I didn't choose the professional football, but it was just an avenue. It was like I said, when I was at Central, at Central Catholic in high school, then I was recruited out of college. And I thought, hey, what a good way to get my free education. So then I went to the University of North Carolina State. So I started there for four years. I was a four-year starter, four-year letterman. I played center there. And coming out my senior year, this is like the highlight of my life. I was rated the number one center in the entire country. Wow. Yeah, it was the second combine camp they had for the NFL combines. And um, it was national and blessed up. What position? Center. Center, okay. Center. So national rated me number one. Blesto had me number two. And um, I ran a 46840. I, I weighed about 285 pounds in college. But I ran a 46840. I had a 38 inch vertical jump. I mean, Dawn, you're an old basketball player. I weighed close to 300 pounds and I could dunk a basketball with two hands. Wow. Then they used to have us bench press 225, and I bench pressed 225 34 times. Wow. <clears throat> so coming out of that combine, as I said, the one, um, the one rated me the number one center in the country, and the other one had me rated number two. So I signed a three-year contract with the New England Patriots. So I was with the Patriots for about a year, and I got injured. That was the year after we were in the Super Bowl. They were in the Super Bowl in 1985, and um, so I came out that next year, which would have been 86. So I was with them for about a year and a half. Back then, you were placed on waivers, so I was picked up by the Detroit Lions. And when I was there, um, Jerry Ball was the nose guard, and Danny Salamua, they were two all-pro nose tackles, and I was playing center. So we'd bash heads all the time, and eventually it wore my body down. And uh, I, I tore my tendon off my elbow, and my tricep tore clean up into my back. Mm. And me and um, Kevin Glover from Maryland were fighting for the number one spot as center, and Kevin Glover went on to be an all-pro for a couple years. Yeah. So we had some really good guys on the team. But that was an awesome, awesome time in my life to play in the NFL. Yeah. That must have been something. In the meantime, were you uh, – in uh, pro football player, you 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 get so much glory. It must have been something like I ran out in Madison Square Garden with Westminster College, and we got clear to the NIT. But I played in the quarterfinals uh, mm -hmm. against St. John's. Okay, it must have been something to have a hundred thousand people. Yeah, absolutely. Right. What happens to pro football players when they get so much glory? Now, but now that we see today what's happening, all these yeah. pro, they're almost making gods out of these yeah. men, right? Well, so you asked me the other day about Tom Brady. And that, that's the time frame that the show's airing. And he's making a decision on how many more years he's going to play. And you ask me, why just wouldn't he retire? And it's the thing that we always talk about. I mean, people go through this loss of identity. And that's why I just love your movie that's out. And I encourage people to get that. But when you're an athlete your whole life, I mean, that's all I ever knew. I mean, people told me when to go to bed, when to get up, what to eat, what to do. how to, And that was my whole being. But when my, my, my career was cut short like that, I mean, I had that loss of identity. I really didn't know what to do anymore or how to do it. And then I start running with the, the wrong crowds there for a while in my life. And um, <clears throat> one side of my life was progressing on back in the Lord. And there was another period of my life, about three years, where I strayed from the Lord. But nobody knew that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a hard time I went through personally. It wasn't like I was that bad of a guy. I mean, everybody thought I had everything going for me. We had the largest transportation company in the state of North Carolina. I had a restaurant, sports bar at the same time. So you had money. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. My worth was over a million dollars. I was probably only 23 years old, 24 years old. Wow. I had a brand new $500,000 home. And to make a long story short, I was indicted on federal drug charges. It was, it was at the time frame when steroids went from being a misdemeanor into a felony. 
So I was pulled in on the tail end of a federal indictment. How many years after you got out of pro football? Um, I was out of the NFL for about two years. When and then happened. you, then they came and put you in prison. Mm -hmm. oh. you know, I ended up doing three years in a federal prison. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lost everything I had. I mean, I had all that and then went into having nothing. But even through that period in my life, God was so faithful. I mean, you think I had lost everything. You would think, you know, we talk about losing our identity. Once I recommitted my life to Christ and once I knew who I was in Christ, none of that stuff mattered anymore. So did this happen after or did in prison when you started realizing you weren't really born again? Maybe you just prayed a prayer. Well, no, I was born again. I mean, I really knew Jesus. I really served Jesus. I had just made some mistakes in my life. You know, I experimented with the anabolic steroids to be a better athlete and you know, I did some things I shouldn't have done, basically. Yeah. And um, so I never lost my faith in Christ. It was just, you know, Don, the Bible says, be not deceived, for whatsoever a man soweth, this is what he shall reap. And that's what happened in my life. I just did some things I shouldn't have did. But the, but the price was costly. I mean, I lost every single thing in my life. But let me tell you this. The, the period that I, spe that I spent in prison was one of the best times in my life. It was just phenomenal. I had such a peace going through that uh, period where people would think, how could you be in prison for you know just about a three year period? But we started a Bible study in a prison where there was never a Bible study. We started a Bible study and there was about 80 guys coming to our Bible study. And we'd meet every single morning at four in the morning. We'd get up and have a Bible study, then we'd go to the work detail all day. And we did that for about two and a half years. The Bible study existed until I left. And then when I came out, it was amazing. It was like God protected me in that window. So no matter what you're going through out there, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's the opioid addiction. I don't care what drugs it is. God can deliver you from that. And no matter what you're going through, God can give you the ability to endure through that. Because if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. How could you ever, when you come out of prison now, how could you end up as on a co-host crossing path and into yeah. the food ministry? Tell me about that. Well, here again, it's just God's faithfulness. You know, the Bible tells us to take one day at a time. Don't fret for tomorrow because each day has its own evil in it. So I just took one day at a time. God put a beautiful woman into my life, my wife, Deborah. We have a beautiful marriage. We've been married for about 25 years right now. And um, God just had a call on my life to be in ministry. So we were just faithful. You know, God says if you're faithful in the little things, he'll be faithful in, in greater things. So he'll open up doors for you. And that's what happened. I mean, it was just like we started out with a little coffee house. And then that the coffee house progressed and it continued to grow. Then a guy came and told me, hey, God told me that you're supposed to have this church in Derry, Pennsylvania. Wow. I'm like, I'm not even a pastor. So we had this great church in Derry and things were going there and things were growing there and just one thing after the other. And then I met you through a friend. And then the things start taking off in crossing path and pass. And it's just been a tremendous experience for me to see the hand of God and what God could do because I never made a phone call to do the coffee house. Wow. I never made a phone call to have that church. And I never made a phone call to meet you. Wow. Every single thing has come because God has ordained it to happen. Don't you think sometimes pastors have helped you in your walk? Wasn't there a man one time you think that we had on TV, uh, Frank? Uh, yeah, absolutely. What did he did he have a little bit? Well, of there's been pastors through my whole life. As I look back, there's been men of God that have come into my life that I believe there's been an impartation, just like with you. I mean, I'm here with you, but there's been such a part of my life that you're a part of. I could go back to the times that I was in college. There was a, a guy there, Byron Seymour, that he mentored me and trained me and taught me the things of the kingdom of God. So I'm thankful for that. So just be appreciative to the pastors in your area, support their churches, yes. and, and team up with the men of God in your area. 
Yeah, we had one pastor, Frank uh, Rocco. Was yeah, it? from down in Souter. Yeah, so how, and he did a little bit, but I mean, we have to we encourage pastors. There's so many pastors Absolutely. out there, and I, and I'm a result of a Methodist pastor that uh, blew I blew smoke in his uh, face while he's telling me about Jesus. Okay, yeah. and he prayed behind my back just like my first wife. Okay, and things like that. So the the steps of a righteous man are ordered, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And and I cross paths with you, and cross paths with you. You know, Ron, you're out into the world now. People talk to you, and and it's good you're you are available to go to speak to youth Absolutely. kids on pro Love football uh, the pro next pro yeah. football player right and also when our movie now that it's on a dvd you're a part of our movie naturally right yep. you're in there right the identity part which we we're going to talk about later is so many pro football players or basketball players or anybody they've had so much glory they can't come down out of that kind of life am i right absolutely I think the thing that, that you have to say about everything that you've been through is the main thing is that loss of identity. And I think that's what everybody struggles with. I mean, if you really don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're suffering from a loss of identity. Yes. Because that's who we get our identity through. When I had everything in sports and even after sports, I had three successful businesses. But, I mean, if I didn't know Jesus... I had a loss of identity. I mean, I really didn't know who I was at that time. Don't you think that's what's happening today? All these sport activities and so forth, they're just losing their identity. They, they love that uh, woman and Glory. food and, you yeah. know, and like the spirit of today, I'm saying people, we talk about the Jewish people being under bondage to tradition, religion, okay? Yeah. The spirit I talk about today, people, is the spirit of uh, materialism, that mm. spirit has got taken over the church and the people, right? Yep. But, you know, we up here at Crossing Paths always try to do something different to get you involved. Uh, now, here we're going to go to a segment here, something to think about. Now, listen closely to this, please. <laughs> What do you think, Ron? Well, Don, I think it's time to quit. Hi. In today's segment of Something to Think About, we all go out of bounds. You notice when I hit that ball, it went out of bounds? But I gotta tell you a little trick I used to do before I become a Christian. See, I had two golf balls here, and I put them in my back pocket. Now, there's a penalty for sin, but there's a penalty for lying, too. But when I take one of these balls, when I go out of bounds, I would take one ball and put it in my front pocket. And while they're looking for my ball, I would go, and there it would fall down my leg. And they would go, where did, how did you ever do that? That ball went over the tree by a quarter of a mile almost. And I'd say, well, really, it's the same ball we started with. Well, what I'm trying to show you here today, people, is sin is sin. In the Old Testament, they had a lot of penalties when you broke the Ten Commandments. In the Old Testament, as you all know, there was a death penalty. And all the time there's sin, whether it be the Old Testament or the New Testament, there are penalties. In the Old Testament, remember the story of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 11, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord has put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. You see, there was a penalty in the Old Testament for all breaking the Ten Commandments. If you go to Exodus, it talks about different sins, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These sins, that a penalty were death. But aren't you glad in the New Testament, when Jesus come, Jesus fulfilled the law. He said in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved, and by faith only, and not by works. Now listen to me. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want to tell you something. When you become a Christian, you can go out of bounds. Not necessarily the bounds that will send you to hell, but don't you speed? Don't you break laws like that? Isn't there other laws that you have done? How about tax returns? When you file your tax return late, what do you do? You get a penalty. You know what the penalty is? It's not death. But in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ came, he fulfilled all the law. Aren't you so glad today that Jesus came to take your place 
your place. He died on the cross for you personally. He took the penalties that you could live eternally in heaven. Now, I'm closing with a statement. Don't think that Jesus don't see what you're doing every day. We break God's laws, but thank God we have an intercessor. His name is Jesus, and he's taken the penalty. He went to the cross for all of our sins. And today the Bible says, if you're born again, you're a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away, all things become new. Today, why don't you ask the Lord to take all your penalties today, tomorrow, and forever. God bless you. So I hope you really enjoyed that segment there on something to think about. So now when I used to play football, they used to say the eye in the sky don't lie. So when you see Dawn out there now hitting that ball that far, you'll know who the true coach is. Now, I've had some good experiences with Don out there on the golf course, so I'm going to let him share a well, little you, bit about that. You, you know, Ron, you know, it's about addictions, too. We've been talking about the identity and addictions, you know, yes. and the story I, I said, too, before, but I told you someday somebody will say something to you and you want to get even. Well, I'm going to get even now. Because when I first golfed with you the first time, okay, and uh, you hit the ball down but went out of bounds, okay, and somebody don't going to believe this, but he did, and believe me, he hit the ball. When it went out of bounds, you throw it in, and now that's two. Uh, take a stroke, and then the next one, he went in the sand trap. Well, three in the sand trap. Now he's uh, up to five, you know, and, and he finally gets on the green in three putts. So I said, hey, Ron, uh, uh, what would you have? He says, uh, I think five. We see pro football players can only count to three, yeah, right? That's right. But isn't it amazing how Chris, we need to have fun today. Christians that's need right. to have fun. We're always trying to bring something different here. We want to close the segment near the fact that addictions, identity, things that crossing paths is doing, you want to get involved, we need your help. Financially, we need it bad, but we're going to stay on the air as long as we get financially help. But the main thing of this program today, as we've been talking about, is addiction, variety, what you can do, how can you get involved. You should go back to your church mm. and help your pastor. You know, I always tell a joke one time, a pastor said, I need somebody to cut the grass. And you're a pastor, right? They go, oh, I'll do it. You know, so a week later, why, the pastor said, you're going to cut, oh, yes, I'm praying about it. Well, and then about a week later, when the grass is up to whatever, the pastor said, you're going to cut the grass. I'm praying about it. See, yeah, mm. you can pray all about it, but sometimes you've got to do something about it. Right. And that's why we have crossing paths here. That's why we have different guests. You want to be on television here? Thank you for that lady that called in there, like Joyce said, that said that the, the segments of something to do about, something to think about is good. But Ron, the main thing is salvation. That's right, buddy. We have crossing paths have went to that one scripture, John 3, 3, 1 Peter 1, 23. What, I wonder for somebody out there that might be a pro football, retired, Absolutely. got all the money in the world. Yeah. Uh, I'd like the lady, her husband was a workaholic. You know, another one called me a pastor who's never home. Things like that that people yeah. get involved in. Absolutely. Please listen to this. There's one way that you can get help. How Absolutely. can you get help, Ron? You know, the Bible tells us this, that a carnal mind or a carnal man cannot accept or receive the things of the kingdom of God. So if you're out there today watching this show and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to give you the opportunity to do that. Because listen, you'll never be able to understand everything. And I feel bad for you because if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you're fighting a losing battle. You know, in John 3, 3, of which Don, John, Don talks about a lot, there's a man that came to Jesus by night. His name was Nicodemus, and he asked Jesus. He told him, he said, look, we know that you're a teacher that has been sent from God. And instead of Jesus saying, thank you for the compliment, Jesus looked him in the face and he said, Nicodemus, a man must be born again. Hallelujah. And Nicodemus said, Lord, what does that mean? Am I to go into my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, look, marvel not at this. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Yes. So you must be born again. There has to be a spiritual Hallelujah. relationship that you have with God. And listen, my friend, if you're watching today, if you're one of the guys I played football with or you know me from the past, or if you don't know Jesus, 
I just really want to take this time today to encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you would, I'd like for you to bow your head with me today and say this prayer. Say, Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I confess my sins unto you. And right now, I ask you by faith to come into my heart, and I ask you to become both my Lord and my Savior, and I promise to serve you for the rest of my life. Now listen, my friend, if you've said that prayer and you mean it from your heart, you've just been born again. So please call the numbers at the bottom of your screen. There's people waiting there that love you and know this. We love you too. Back in the days when my great-grandfather worked ranches throughout this honored country, life was pretty simple. Good, it was good. Bad, it was bad. Black and white. The only time I really thought about my wife when I was in Las Vegas, or even called her, is to want to know how the motel was doing. My life was engulfed in that total lifestyle that I was living. Down deep inside, the only time I hated myself really when I would say, I would go home at night after I've done, gone for a week and done some things that were all wrong, all the things I talked about. I start hating myself indirectly is what, when I'd lay down at bed at night and I'd say, try to reason out, why am I doing this? I really wanted to stop, I really did but I could, didn't know how to stop. I think Don was at the point where Don was Don. He was the almighty king. Uh, he had a very uh, successful business. Uh, everybody liked Don. My emotions, my conscience, my satisfaction of, was all satisfaction of me. I took care of my family. I was a good family man to an extent on that, but I still, when my life was revolved around the emotional feelings of gambling, alcohol, women, and all the things that I was doing. You lived in fear, knowing, not knowing what's going to walk through the door. Is it going to be Don Reed or is it going to be the monster? This is a tragic and an amazing love story about redemption and an option that would never leave or forsake him. There had to be a better life when I got on my hands and knees in my old home there. I said, there had to be a better life. 